The next thing we need to do is, is catch the ship too. So we haven't done this yet, but we will. So that's what we hope to demonstrate later this year, maybe as soon as two or three months from now. As promised, I just got home from my Starbase trip, but I wanted to make you a highlight video from Elon Musk's 42 minute talk about the road to making life multiplanetary, an update on SpaceX's plan to reach Mars. Which by the way, did anyone else find it interesting that this talk was 42 minutes? As we know, Elon says that the answer to life is 42, and that is from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But in case you don't want to spend 42 minutes watching this, I figured I would give you some of the best highlights from his talk. Which, by the way, it's unclear if it was filmed before or after Flight 9. However, we do not get any new information about the Starship launch that we just had. So this is just strictly about where SpaceX is at with their plans for, you know, going to Mars. So some of the biggest takeaways, SpaceX is looking to launch five Starships to Mars in 2026. However, Elon's pretty 50-50 on if they'll actually make that 2026 Mars window. But check out the scenery for this talk. The people in the audience, which I'm pretty sure it was only open to workers at Starbase, are next to the new integrated hot staging ring that we'll see in the next version of Super Heavy. And so Elon went over some near-term upgrades and plans, as well as obviously some long-term plans for getting to the red planet. Elon talked about the goal to manufacture a thousand starships per year using the future Gigabay, which SpaceX is building right now, not only in Texas, but also in Florida. That's our Gigabay. So we're, we're, we're expanding integration to produce a thousand starships per year. Well, yeah, that hasn't been built yet, but we're building it. Um, that is a truly enormous structure. So this will be one that, that'll be one of the biggest structures. I think by some measures, the biggest structure in the world. Elon also took some time to congratulate the SpaceX team on what a huge milestone they just accomplished with reflying a super heavy booster for the first time. And also just catching the booster three times now is pretty incredible. So even though now we actually have real life video of a booster being caught by the chopstick arms, we did get some new renders of what it would look like to have the ship caught in Pad B's chopsticks. And Elon says that this could happen within the next two to three months, but we just have to see how the next flight goes. I will say it will be pretty spectacular, not only to see a catch of the booster, but also of the ship. And I did notice a lot less people at this launch, maybe partly because it was on a weekday, but also because there was no catch perhaps. And I think people are getting really spoiled and really want to see that spectacular sight. And I don't blame them. However, I have to add that this was the loudest Starship launch that I have ever witnessed, and I've witnessed all of them except for Flight 5. Now back to the presentation, we also saw the first close-up video of Raptor 3 firing at the McGregor test site in McGregor, Texas. So we've seen some pictures of Raptor 3, but not a lot of updates. And so now we know that there have been more than 300 engine tests accumulating more than 16,000 seconds of runtime. And we even have this nice video of Raptor 3 running and looking pretty awesome. Which, by the way, Elon didn't name, but did bring up the exchange between Tori Bruno and Gwen Shotwell, where Tori Bruno with ULA basically said, oh, that looks pretty nice for a partially assembled engine. <laughs> and uh, Gwen clapped back saying, yeah, it's uh, pretty nice for partially assembled, showing that it is definitely not. It's just a sleek, lean design and it works great. And so if you would like to get this as a shirt, well, I did you a favor and I made it for you. So you can order this on my website. The link is in the description. Now we've seen an animation of the orbital refueling, something that Starship and the program still needs to accomplish and has never been done before. But we have a new render of this propellant transfer, which yes, Elon says does look a little not safe for work. We also got some new actual Mars information. So right now, SpaceX is looking at different location candidates, and I guess Elon really likes the Arcadia region. In fact, he said that's the name of his daughter, but this region has large ice deposits. And so this Arcadia region is the top candidate for the landing locations. 
We also have this timeline, which is very ambitious. So you can see it goes from 2026 to 2034. So the first flight to Mars will be all about proving that we can get to Mars, sending the minimum viable vehicles with the goal of maximizing learning, demonstrating key technologies, needed for Mars transit and landing. The second launch to Mars will be to land the initial infrastructure, confirm resource availability, prep landing areas, and deliver equipment for people. And then the third trip to Mars will have the goals of resource mining and propellant generation, building roads and pads, habitat construction, increasing power generation and storage. And the fourth flight already has the goals of increasing independence from Earth, mining and processing Mars resources, global mobility, and global communications. And one thing that I really like that Elon said, and this is something that has been talked about a lot, is that how will we establish government and rules on Mars? So Elon says it'll be up to the Martians on how they want to recompile civilization and govern their new world, which I think is fair. He also mentioned that the first flights will have Tesla Optimus bots to explore and prepare, which we've known about, but you know, it's official here. And we've also seen the Optimus Tesla bot make a lot of progress recently. So I think that those two programs and technologies are progressing together nicely. And finally, I meant to update some information from the press release that SpaceX sent out like right as I press publish on my Starship Flight 9 wrap up video. So a lot of people are wondering what exactly happened with the ship. And I just wanted to read what SpaceX said, quote, during Starship's orbital coast, several in space objectives were planned, including the first payload deployment from Starship and a relight of a single Raptor engine. Starship's payload door was unable to open, which prevented the deployment of the eight Starlink simulator satellites. A subsequent attitude control error resulted in bypassing the Raptor relight and prevented Starship from getting into the intended position for re-entry. Starship then went through an automated safing process to vent the remaining pressure to place the vehicle in the safest condition for re-entry. Contact with Starship was lost approximately 46 minutes into the flight, with all debris expected to fall within the planned hazard area in the Indian Ocean. And so it's unfortunate that SpaceX still hasn't been able to test those re-entry heat shield tiles and the new configurations and, you know, experiments that they were going to conduct. And uh, I hope that they're able to do it on the next flight. But this was definitely progress from Flight 7 and Flight 8. And I have to just congratulate the team for this amazing milestone of reflying a super heavy booster for the first time. That is an incredible accomplishment. And I feel like, you know, unfortunately didn't get all of the praise that it deserves considering the still some issues with the ship. However, as Elon posted, he thinks that they'll be ramping up the Starship launch cadence and we could see another flight in about three to four weeks. So hopefully that happens. And it's also pretty exciting that those upgraded Raptor engines should be flying before the end of the year, which will make things look almost a little naked. The upgraded Raptors have a complete redesign of the aft end of the booster and the ship. So because they don't need a heat shield around the upper portion of the engine, it greatly simplifies the base of the booster and the ship. Elon said it'll look a little naked, especially on the booster side, because the engines will just be there, not with stuff around them. And so I'm really glad that SpaceX released this talk. I was getting a little bit nervous when Elon canceled uh, the live stream that they were going to have this update. And, you know, not only I'm sure the employees really enjoyed having him there um, in person to sort of rally the troops, but also everyone else on the periphery who follows the program. Yeah, we're really interested in what's going on. And of course, we are pretty big SpaceX fan. So this is great to have Elon back down at Starbase. In fact, he announced on X on May 28th, quote, as my scheduled time as a special government employee comes to an end, I would like to thank President Donald Trump for the opportunity to reduce wasteful spending. The Doge mission will only strengthen over time as it becomes a way of life throughout the government. So yes, he is, uh, will be spending less time at the White House and more time at Starbase, which by the way, I have to say Starbase as a city is pretty exciting. Starbase just held their first city council meeting. 
um, I was lucky enough to, to get a little behind the scenes tour and it was really great to see the evolution of Starbase as a community. And that's exactly what it is. There are some uh, amazing, you know, not only employees, but families. Here we are at, uh, at the newly incorporated Starbase, Texas. This is uh, the first new city made in America in, I think, quite a few decades. So it's really, really exciting to see what's happening down at Starbase. And as Elon mentioned in his speech, he encourages you to visit it because there is a public beach at the end of the highway. So it's it's an experience um, that you will not find anywhere else in terms of getting close to rockets. And uh, they are putting some more, you know, fences and and some walls up. It's not quite as visible as it was maybe a few years ago, but it's definitely worth going and checking it out and supporting the local community. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, Ellie in Space, and I'll see you in the next one.